Good day, fellow investors. Many, especially here on YouTube, are focused on airline stocks. But if you want to get exposed to the growth, the mega trend that is travel, global population, the global middle class population is going from the current 3.5 billion to 5.5 billion over the next decade. Plus, 80% of the current population was never in an airplane. So imagine all the potential growth that is there. And this COVID-19 interruption perhaps gives you a great opportunity to become an investor and own an airport. In this video, I'll discuss a few facts why it's better to own airports than airlines, give you an analysis of Fraport, which is of the Frankfurt airport plus other airports across the world that they have bought, and then give you an investment conclusion. What am I doing? What do I think about and what am I going to do with this airport situation now? Let's start. So you might wonder how I came to this idea of airports. Well, you know that I have been researching all the Austrian stocks, all the stocks uh, listed on the Austrian Stock Exchange. So as I came to the letter F, Flughafen Wien, the Vienna airport, and I made an analysis and then I saw, okay, this is a cheap airport, looks cheap, stock is down. Let me see what else we have there so I created say as I do always let's do a sector analysis then I looked at why owning airports why not which we'll discuss in a second but I also have a list here that I have to fill now and then see okay which airports at what price what are the risks in general and this will all be filled and then I'll make a decision on whether I will buy something or not. Plus, if we look at stocks, th those airport stocks, those have been cheaper in 2010, but then the world was going to end twice. But now the COVID interruption, of course, they were a little bit expensive. That's why I didn't really look at them in that over the past few years. But now this might be really, really interesting. Similar uh, stock charts are for all the uh, other airport stocks that I have seen. So very, very interesting situation to dig into deeper. Now, what's the key with airports versus all the other industries in the travel industries? Well, if you have a profitable route, I don't know, from Paris to New York, what will the competition do? They will lease an airplane and they will say, okay, from today at a lower price, we are also flying that route. With airports, if you have a very profitable airport like the Schiphol Airport in Amsterdam or, I don't know, Heathrow in the center of London. Yes, there can be these small airports one hour from London, one hour from uh, Amsterdam or one and a half hour from uh, Paris or something like that. But people will always tend to fly to the closest because you fly to save time. So you don't want to travel another three hours to an airport. And this means that airports, unlike airlines, have a mode. As you can see on this picture, you have many different brands, many different airlines that compete all for the same customer, but only one airport where the customer is flying from or flying to. And that's the key with airports, especially when you build one, you have it, you have built it. It's very, very difficult that you will have another one coming next to you if you're not in Beijing, but that's a different story. So here we have Amsterdam. I think they have five runways and then they are trying, because it's overcapacitated, they are trying to find new positions. Lelystad, Eindhoven, not going good since Ryanair even left. Even if it's just an hour and something from Amsterdam, The Hague is a small airport, but you see the mode that these guys have here. Further, as I said, airports offer exposure to global mega trends. The population will grow 25% over the next 30 years. Urbanization, more people living in cities, more flying. So increasing living standards, which means more traveling as their consumer behavior changes too. The market dynamics, therefore, for airline for air traffic growth are very positive. The expected growth trend is 5% per year and 4.2% after that, after 2028. So over the next 20 years, the market is expected to grow at 4.6% per 
year. This means that the market will be 2.5 times bigger in 20 years than it is now. And you always have the same airport there, you maybe add a runway, but all these people will come through the same airport, which means a lot more money for the airports that are already there now. And this is how it looks like. So 2011, it wasn't such a big year for the Vienna International Airport, but slow, slow growth as the airport was there, was being built. You see how the profitability increases much more than the traffic. Earnings went up six times. So that's the big thing with airports. Once you build it, the relatively fixed cost compared to revenue growth leads to higher profits. And then also, what was the most difficult, the negative situation when you go to an airport? When you say goodbye to your loved ones, you go to the par parking lot, you want to pay for the 45 minutes you went there, and then you get a heart attack because of the price of how expensive it is to park at airports. If you own airports, you make the money. Then further, airports are regulated monopoly with the monopoly given you by the state usually. So it's very important to also look at the concessions. This is from Fraport, stock that we will discuss in a moment. And they have the Frankfurt Airport, their crown jewel airport in their portfolio of airports. And the good thing is there is no time, there is not a time limit for their concession. So they own 100% of the, that. And they also own the Ljubljana Airport. Also, no concession limits, which means that you can invest, etc, etc. In Greece, okay, they still have, what, 37 years till their concessions to expire. But if you are looking at airports, always look at how long the concession lasts because to avoid any strange surprises. So that's key when it comes to investing in airports. If you can own 100% of the airport, no time limits, that's a good deal a better deal than let's say 2040 expiration or we have 2024 concession expiration and then they'll have to all renegotiate or fight for it or who knows what that can get ugly especially in countries like turkey without offense but the reality is reality then airport stocks have usually been very expensive so we see now those are 30 40 50 percent down and now the price earnings ratio based on prior year prior covid situation is around 14 but it usually was around 25 30 some some examples it was even 40 let's say in 2017 i think i looked at last time and then it was about 40 here for fraport Flughaven Wien also before the earnings growth something 30 like this so it was always expensive and the dividend yields were really really small now if the situation normalizes the dividend yields start to get interesting for a business that might more than double its revenue over the next decades plus price earnings ratios are really really interesting now some say okay airport stocks are risky well let's look at this is again from Vienna airport Yes, the growth in passengers what declined during the financial crisis was negative during 2012, MERS, 9-11, of course, but still it constantly grew with some interruption. So, of course, now everything is still due to COVID, but even in crisis, it's not that an airport loses too much money. It's not like an airline that has to have a load fact factor of 94% to be full and if it to be profitable. And if it's 88, they go bankrupt. If it's 94 load factor for aircraft, if it's down to 88, okay, maybe one year the dividend will be cut. But then things recover fast. And especially here you can see the growth that they achieved over the last few years and this growth really increased profitability and everything so if this growth continues maybe not so exponentially like here but over the next 10 20 30 years that's also the reward that investors will be able to expect in the future so the first thing you can buy an airport that has a moat there is a lot of growth growth trends growth more passengers more money costs not that much higher because once you build it you've built it and 
that's it. There it is. It makes money. Airplanes came, airplanes go. And that's how you make more and more money. And it's unlikely that somebody else will make a big airport as you have around you to be a real competition. Then also in crisis, in normal crisis, we can say that COVID situation is once in a 50 year period that it will happen. In normal crisis, it's not that bad for the airport. Those are still cash flow profitable. Even in normal recessions, even in 2009, people were still flying. Which, again, on the great growth trend, higher dividends, higher cash flows, and as dividends grow, so does the stock price. So you get a double whammy there. So let's take a look at Fraport stock analysis. This is an interesting airport because it actually didn't add value to shareholders since it went public in 2001 because the stock price is similarly still there. So it's an interesting one to watch and to follow to see whether there might be an explosion again like it was the case in 2018. You make three times your money plus eventual dividends in the future and that's why airport stocks are an interesting buy or an interesting stock to watch now. So as I said it owns mainly 66% of revenue is from Frankfurt and then other 10 airports from South America, Asia and also in Europe. So they own manage their airports and they are trying to of course increase their profits. On COVID-19 the change during the first quarter compared to the previous year was really really a disaster almost 100% no traffic and a lot of business is related to traffic so no traffic at an airport no business if you look at the number of the revenues related to traffic 90% of that is related to traffic so if there is no traffic there is no business and they had the Frankfurt airport was 2.2 billion euros revenues in 2019 so as the situation looks now it will be if things improve over the end of the year it will be maximally maybe 500 million but really maybe they are on cold running costs and they are trying to save on staff costs so it is 900 million they can't avoid it they will get government deals helps etc etc trying to save 30 million per month they are trying to save 10 million per month on non-staff costs but the costs just to run and keep it like it is are around a billion for sure over the year and they can't avoid it one 1.23 billion and if the situation doesn't improve in 2020 they will lose a billion euros that's a given and that's the covid situation risk Plus, they are continuing with their investments for now because they can borrow at very, very cheap costs. So they are expanding the terminal, making a new terminal, I think, in Frankfurt. Now I know what's the building that always went on there when I passed there with full speed through a build, building area. It's very interesting. Lima, also big investments. In Greece, they have made some investments and also in Brazil. So they are continuing, hoping that this would be just an interruption and not a full crisis that will last for decades and the world is going to end as many preach. This is their debt profile. The average debt condition, the interest rate is 2.3%, which is really, really ridiculous. But they have a lot of debt. They have 5.6 billion euros in debt with good maturities uh, dispersed across the year. So they should be able to refinance that, especially if this is an interruption. Their problem could be if interest rates go up and there is no inflation. But that's unlikely given the monetary environment we are in. So Fraport is one of the most indebted uh, airports but if things improve this debt is leveraged so the stock will explode higher much much more. Their strategy is very simple middle class growth, migration, globalization, tourism and they hope to increase and grow 4.6% or 4% per year as it was the average that we projected already or like Airbus, Boeing and Briar and everybody else in the airplane industry expects. Let's look at 
fundamentals. Now, revenue, slow growth there. Net income also grew slowly over the years. They have been increasing their dividends, which is also okay. Book value went up. Okay, they are creating value, but this is the key. Look at the operating cash flows. So operating cash flows are almost at a billion euros and they are investing a lot. They have been investing a lot, new terminal in Frankfurt. So they have high capital expenditures. And that leads to negative cash flows over the last few years. But let's say that they make 1 billion in operating cash flows per year, deduct, let's say, a normal amount of capital expenditures of, let's say, 400 million, and then deduct 100 million for the interest that they have to pay, they would have positive free cash flows in a normal good year when this investment cycle is over of about 500 million. Divide that by the number of shares of 93 million and that's 6 euros per share. If they start paying 6 euros per share in dividends, which is possible over the next 5-10 years, I can guarantee you that this will not be at 37. This will be at least at 120 or even more. So that's the investment thesis, the upside when it comes to investing in airports now, especially if the airports grow. So market cap is 3.46 billion. If they start paying 500 million in dividends, you know how the story goes when there is a growth stock increasing its dividend. So as we said, if we assume 400 million euros of maintenance, free cash flow 600 million euros, deduct the interest that they have to pay down to 500 million euros, it's possible that they pay a dividend yield of 13% on cost. Dividend yields, airports are always expensive, will go to 4%. That's three times your money on the stock. And this can happen over the next five to 10 years. And that's why Fraport is an interesting investment like all the other airports in the current environment. There are also risks. This company is expanding as we have seen all across the globe, which means if the growth, the 5% growth that is estimated doesn't come, then they have overexpanded and that will be a weight on the profits, not an uplift. So it's all about the trends there in the growth. Then there is always competition. I started with Vienna, looked at Fraport, Frankfurt, and I'll look at Zurich. And these hubs are all aiming to get that international traffic that later goes. Now you fly into Vienna or Zurich, then you fly from there, for example, to Venice or Florence or wherever you want to go on your global trip. So that's also the competition there is intensifying, but it all depends on how fast the market grows. If it's 3%, they might be over investing now. If it's 7%, 6%, they will make a lot of money. And then there is also debt issues. That's also always a two-edged sword. COVID-19, how long it will last. And the main risk is slower than expected growth in the future. So always keep in mind those risks and how those will affect your positions if you own. So what am I going to do? I really like airports, especially at this level. So I'm going to go through the whole, whole list. My initial uh, reports will be published on my blog. Maybe I'll make a few videos again, but you can check them there. You can also subscribe there on my newsletter to get all the initial researchers in your email and then see what something fits or not. And then also for my stock market research platform, which you can check in the links below, you can see whether, what am I going to buy, how I'm going to position myself. I might buy nothing now and then buy an airport in four years. If this is a sector that I will really dedicate myself to learning and understanding. That's what I do. That's what we do on this channel. So please subscribe, click that notification bell. Thanks for watching. Looking forward to your comments and I'll see you in the next video.